Hello again, guys. Uh, this is Mr. Gonzalez. Um, I hope this video finds you well. Uh, today we are going to be doing day two of cell transport. All right. Uh, so we have already done day one, which is the structure uh, of the cell membrane and homeostasis. Now we're going to do day two, which is uh, knowing the difference between active and passive transport together with different examples for each of them. Okay, so uh, there's some things that will determine the movement across the membrane. Okay, whether some things can move across a membrane will depend on various things. The first one is polarity. Okay, now you don't have to worry too much about what polarity is, but just understand that uh, molecules will be either polar or non-polar, and that will uh, that will be decided. Uh, on the structure of the molecule and whether the molecule has a, a, a charge or not. Okay, but you don't have to worry too much about that right now. Just know that this is just one of the ways that will determine whether things go in or out of the cell. Okay, uh, the size of the molecule is one very important one, whether the molecule is too big or too small. Well, if it is very tiny, you understand, you have to understand that if, if it was the size of that little dot, it can actually get through uh, the cell membrane, the um, phospholipid bilayer. However, if it was as big as that dot, then it will have to need, uh, a, probably need a way to get through it because it's not going to fit through the small gaps between um, the phospholipid bilayer. The last one is the concentration of molecules inside and outside of the cell. Well, what that means is whether you have too many of them on one side or the other will determine whether they go in or out. So if you have way too many here versus very little here, well, tendency is they will want to go inside. If you had that many outside and yet you had only few here, well, they're going to want to go to this side. They're going to go from high to low. That sometimes will depend. So concentration will definitely uh, you know, be an important factor. These are just three examples. Uh, make sure that you answer these questions on the video stop, please. Why is it important to have homeostasis and why is it important to have a cell membrane? Uh, so transportation, uh, transportation of molecules such as water, oxygen, glucose uh, into and out of the cell, those are going to be uh, different things that the cells will be transporting from one side to the other and there are different examples so we're going to be looking at different, uh, all of these different types of transport uh, today. The first one, well, you have to know what passive transport is. And passive, when I think of passive as someone who is very passive, uh, someone who likes to sit down and not spend much energy when they're very, very passive. So passive transport requires absolutely no energy. Um, it says here that it's the movement of materials from high to low concentration. What that means is that you're going from an area where you have a lot of molecules like this one to an area where there is very few molecules like that. You're going from high concentration of molecule to an area of low concentration of molecules. Okay, And this is going to require absolutely no energy by the cell. It's kind of like sliding down a slide. When you're going from high concentration to low concentration, you're going from high to low, well, you're not going to require any energy to go down. However, if this kid, after he went down, he decided, hey, I want to go back up, well, guess what? He's going to have to use energy from, from low to high. From low to high definitely will require energy. But if you're going from high to low, then you're not going to require any energy. And that's what we call passive transport. Okay? It's passive. You're going from high concentration to low concentration. There's three examples of them, and the three examples are diffusion, facilitated diffusion, which is going to be uh, just a bit different, and then the last one is osmosis. Okay? Um, so diffusion, concentration, gradient. Uh, you do want you to understand what concentration gradient means, and that's one of the important words that you have to remember. 
A concentration gradient is the difference in concentration levels from one area to another. So for example, I would like to use this example right here. If you had um, this many particles, this many molecules on this side, I just, just say that this is a, the cell membrane here, semipermeable membrane. If you have this many molecules on this side, well, they're going to be going with the concentration gradient, which means that they're going from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. We say that they're going with the gradient. Okay? I'm having difficulties writing with that, but there it goes. Okay? So eventually you're going to see that the molecules will start passing through until you have equal amounts on the outside and the inside of the cell okay so that's what we call concentration gradient going from uh, different concentrations whether it is going from high concentration to low concentration which we say we're going with the gradient so the cell tries to reach equilibrium uh, which means equal concentrations on both sides of the membrane you have this many in here known in here well the cell membrane what it wants to do is, is wants to make it equal okay uh, make sure that you're filling this out. So the first tar the first type is passive transport. It requires no energy. Um, we're going from high concentration to low concentration. And it is the movement with the concentration gradient. Okay. Now there's three types that we're going to talk about. The first one is diffusion. The next one is facilitated diffusion. And finally we have osmosis, which we're going to spend a day talking about okay so diffusion is requires absolutely no energy and it is the movement the, the movement of molecules from high concentration to low concentration across the phospholipid bilayer okay so you have very tiny molecules very very small molecules will move from one side of high concentration to the other side of low concentration and this is what we call diffusion okay um, so the next, show that we fill that out, movement of molecules across the membrane, make sure that you specify across the phospholipid bilayer. So the next slide here gives you an example of diffusion and it is just when you drop some dye or some food coloring into a cup with water, uh, with water you can see what diffusion is. So normally you just drop it and you'll see that the molecules will start spreading out all around the cup until they have covered the entire area of the uh, water and this is an example of diffusion well molecules will want to do the same thing except that they want to do it across the semi-permeable membrane of the cell um, and you can actually do this same example uh, with perfume which we're probably going to do uh, the next thing is facilitated diffusion and facilitated diffusion is the movement of molecules with the help of a protein channel okay so before uh, it is exactly the same thing as diffusion the only difference is that now we have to use a protein channel because we are moving larger molecules okay these molecules are going to be larger so you require something like a protein to guide it through it they cannot fit through the phospholipids so they have to fit through the protein channel. Everything else is the same. So collected that information. Now we have facilitated diffusion. is the movement of molecules with the help of a protein. Okay. The last one uh, of facilitated diffusion of passive transport, I'm sorry, is osmosis. And osmosis is the movement of water through a selectively permeable membrane. The difference uh, with osmosis is that osmosis is only talking about the movement of water water is going to always go from an area of high concentration of water to an area of low concentration of water so whatever there is more concentration of water well water wants to go to an area of lower concentration of water okay and it's this exactly the same principle it requires no energy you're going from high concentration of water to low concentration of water. Have this down. Osmosis, diffusion of water through a selectively permeable membrane. And you have different types which you're gonna talk about on the next lecture.
So a little check for understanding here, uh, which one will be osmosis, facilitated diffusion, and just simple diffusion. We'll make sure that you answer the question. Now we're going to talk about active transport. And active transport is the movement of materials from low concentration to high concentration. Now we're trying to go uphill. We're trying to go instead of down, we're trying to go up. So if you're going up, well, you have to understand that we will need to use energy. And that energy comes in the form of ATP. So we're moving from low concentration to high concentration, which requires energy because it, it, because it is against the concentration gradient. There are three types. There's protein pump, which we're going to talk about next, uh, exocytosis and endocytosis, which are pretty cool things. Um, we already had this down. The next one is active transport, requires ATP, which is energy. We're going from low concentration to high concentration, and it is moving against the concentration gradient. Okay. So uh, the first one is a protein pump, and a protein pump um, is where proteins are going to be used to move materials from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration, and it's obviously going to require ATP. So if you notice this picture, the arrow says that it's moving through that protein and it's going from low concentration, notice there's only two here, to high concentration. Well, if you're going this way, you're going to the right, you are going to require energy to do this. And that's what this picture is showing. Make sure that you have this transport of materials with the use of ATP through a protein as you know therefore the uh, the name protein pump it has to use energy to pump it inside or outside of the cell the next one is exocytosis and exocytosis exo means exit okay you have to remember that exo means to exit okay um, and that's the easiest way to remember it is when cells move large substances out of the cell and this is obviously going to require energy so normally the cells are going to move these molecules in what we call little transport vessels okay and it's large amounts of material going out of the cell that's uh, this picture uh, implies okay and this is obviously going to require a lot of energy from the cell so just making sure that we have that information uh, exocytosis, uh, the large substances leaving the cell. And now you can tell, well, endocytosis, endo means to enter, oops, uh, and it is when the cell brings large substances into the cell. And this also will require energy. So this is actually an example of a, a white blood cell, and this is actually taking a bacterium in. So, um, the bacterium is going to be swallowed pretty much. Uh, it's going to be engulfed by the cell membrane and eventually it's going to you know, be inside of that little uh, vesicle um, and it's going to go into the cell. So this is endocytosis coming into the cell. Okay, just making sure that we have the info. Large substances enter the cell. Last couple of examples that I have here, phagocytosis, which means cell eating. This is where cells are going to be eating, um, you know, solid particles like white blood cells engulfing a G cell. And this is what this picture is showing. You can actually look up videos. If you have some time, look up some videos of this. And then uh, pinocytosis is a cell drinking. And there's many cells um, take water in and put them in. Um, organelles uh, and that's where it stays so this is pinocytosis so making sure that we have everything last part it means phagocytosis cell eats solid substances pinocytosis or pinocytosis cell takes in liquids um, this is just the last step for understanding I want you to tell me which one is endocytosis which one is exocytosis uh, and which one is um, protein pump, okay?
So that concludes this video, guys. I hope uh, that you find it interesting. Uh, see you next time, and thank you for watching.